Hey there, Hi Voice here. Let me show you another technique to find a deadlock, this time within a .NET application. In my previous video, I showed how to find deadlocks using the locks command, which is an automatic check for critical sections that will find a deadlock if it was caused by a critical section. Let me show you another technique to use a similar kind of command, but this time we are going to find a deadlock in a .NET application. So let's start with this custom application which I wrote specifically for this video. What this application does is that it creates a deadlock in .NET and we are going to use a memory dump of this application to analyze the deadlock. I have put the source code for this application on GitHub and I put the link in the description below. Let me go ahead and click create thread. Then I'm going to click lock. At this point, the program is actually deadlocked. And even if I click on create thread again or click on lock again or even try to move the window, the program won't move. What has happened is that the deadlock has occurred and the program has hung in memory. How this application works is that there are two buttons, create thread and lock. What it does is that when I click on create thread, the program will create a thread and then it will hold on to a lock. In this case, a reader writer lock. When I click on the lock button, it will hold on to that lock from the main thread. This simulates a deadlock. Let me switch to WinDebug real quick. What I'm going to do is I'm going to attach to the uh, process. The name of the process is hang app2. I'm going to attach to the process and then I'm going to take a memory dump of the process. Now, technically, you can analyze uh, deadlocks without taking a memory dump. But for this video, I'm going to take a memory dump. That way I can kill the program. And if anything happens, I can just resume analysis because I have the dump on disk. So I'm going to click um, attach non-invasively. Um, the reason I do that is because if the program has hung in memory, there could be a chance that WinDebug cannot create the remote thread that is needed to attach itself. Um, it does happen. Uh, I have grown accustomed to always clicking uh, non-invasively, but sometimes you can click invasively and it will still work. Uh, I'm just going to do it this way. So what I'm going to do next is I'm just going to take the memory dump and then I'm going to kill the application and just open the memory dump. Capturing the memory dump from WinDebug is pretty straightforward. You just run dump the uh, dot dump with slash ma and give it a path. I'm just going to call it dmp1.dmp. The slash ma means mini dump all. Uh, all, always put mini dump all. Uh, you can make the dump smaller if you want, but since this is .NET and since I, I don't want this video to go hours long, just, just do mini dump all. So I'm going to press enter and the dump is going to be written to disk. With the dump written to disk, I'm going to kill the application. Then I'm just going to open the uh, memory dump by open dump file. There we are, dmp1.dmp. I'm just going to open the uh, memory dump. Uh, just, just wait for it to load. Now, at this point, you need Microsoft symbols to be loaded. I have configured my computer so that whenever I start a, um, a I open a memory dump or just start WinDebug, um, I actually get the symbols loaded um, into from a cache. Uh, I have the uh, Microsoft symbols loaded um, because it's in an environment variable. I'll put a link in the description below how, how you set that up. Um, but Always put um, Microsoft symbols if it's a .NET memory dump, you definitely need it. So at this point, um, we are just going to analyze this dump. And again, the reason I took the memory dump is because I just wanted to kill the program. You don't have to do that. You can analyze the program uh, in place. You don't have to take the memory dump, but I find it simpler just to do this. Okay, so we are ready at WinDebug. Because I know this is a .NET application, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do load by SOSCLR. Uh, this is the SOS plugin, you want to load it. And then I'm going to load another plugin called uh, SOSEX. SOSEX is a plugin that was written by this great guy. He, he works for Microsoft right now. Uh, I'm going to put a link to in the description below where to get this plugin. What this plugin does is that it's got more commands than the basic SOS uh, plugin. 
we are going to use commands from SOICX. That's why I'm loading it. Now, technically, you can analyze the entire memory dump using SOS, but I'm going to use SOICX because I want to show you the automatic command that is needed to analyze. So once it has loaded, it's going to ask to create a heap index. Um, you, you, you don't need to do this. Uh, we are not analyzing all the objects in the heap. You, you can go ahead and do it. Um, I, I'm just going to skip. I'm, I'm not going to run the BHI. Uh, but what you must do is you must load SOS and SOSEX. Okay, there are two commands that you need to know. Um, the first command, which is listed in the uh, description, is uh, DLK. Now, DLK is a command to automatically find deadlocks. So I'm going to run that command first. But you're going to see something quite interesting when, when I run it. Um, it's not going to work. And the reason it's not going to work is because there has been some change in .NET. And this plugin has not been updated in quite a while. And somehow or another, it cannot analyze the locks properly. That's okay. We are going to use a different technique. But I wanted to show DLK as the uh, first command. Because that's the first thing you're going to get if you Google how to do this automatically in Winnebug. You're going to get DLK. It generally doesn't work in modern .NET. I'm using .NET 4.8, I believe. Um, it it doesn't work, don't worry about it, DLK, just leave it alone. The next command we can use is a command called mWaits. Now, what mWaits does is that it looks at all the threads and then it looks at all the locks and it actually shows which threads are waiting for which locks. M is manage, waits is wait. So what we get in the output is that we get all the uh, lines that say examining, scanning, etc, etc. The most important is this part over here. These are all the threads that exist. And it says that CLR thread 1, which is OS thread um, BB0. Now, now, why is there two lines called threads? Is because the CLR numbers is threads uh, sequentially, but the OS, that's actually the PID of the thread. So we will use OS thread to match it up. Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't really matter. Uh, what we want to do is we want to find out why the program is deadlocked. So according to M weights, we have one thread that is waiting onto a lock. So we got a clue, and we're going to analyze that one thread. So the next command I'm going to run is uh, threads. Threads is a .NET command, and what it does is that it looks at all the threads that this process has, and it looks at which ones were created by .NET. And it's going to put a line for each one of the .NET threads. What we can do is we can look at thread 0, which is the most important thread. Because if thread 0 stops, the entire program will deadlock. And that is exactly what's happened. The OS ID of thread 0 is BB0, which is exactly the same as the thread that is acquiring the lock. In this case, the lock is a reader-writer lock. That's why it says RW lock, and the lock level is writer. So we know that this lock is somehow or another holding the thread. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to analyze this lock to see whether we have found the deadlock. Um, I kind of know what's going to happen, but let's just play along. I'm going to analyze lock and you can see how to look inside the lock to determine if this is truly the cause of the deadlock. To analyze the uh, lock, all we got to do is click on the uh, address over here and WinDebug will automatically run the command RW lock. RW lock is a command to analyze the lock by looking at the uh, object and then just walking the uh, properties and seeing um, what are the um, properties of the lock. Uh, it's it's the same as doing MDT with the memory address, but like that. Uh, but this this is very tedious. Just use RW lock. Uh, what we want to look at is we want to look at the writer level. We want to look at the uh, reader count, and we want to see. Uh, what's happening of what owns this lock. We can see that the uh, writer thread uh, 3 and the uh, writer level is 1. Uh, now, this, this is not a good idea. Um, if the writer level is 1, it means that the uh, lock is currently already been acquired. That is why the next thread can't acquire it. Let's go a bit deeper. I'm going to look at the uh, roots of this object. And I can see that the uh, reader writer lock has been acquired, so it, it's alive. And I can see that the unlock 
is also trying to acquire it. So there are two routes to the same lock. That means that's a deadlock. If the writer is one and there are two roots, that is the reason why um, it can't gain the lock. And I can see that on lock, that's the button I clicked. And I can see that the event handler is from the button I clicked. And that is the reason that this application has deadlock. Now, if I go back up to M weights, I can actually see that M weights looks for reader writer locks. He looks for reader writer lock slim critical sections, uh, anything that has a sync block. So you can use this command on many different kinds of locks. You don't necessarily have to use it on a reader writer lock. Just like the locks command, which I showed in my previous video, um, give this a go. If you have a deadlock and you don't know what's causing it, definitely just give it a go. Try using M weights, uh, try using locks, try using anything you got. And if it does work out, you'll find the deadlock uh, much quicker. Uh, let me just switch back to full screen. So this is a just a simple technique uh, that you can use. I use a lot of these kind of simple techniques. I just run them one after the other. Um, I don't really have a comprehensive way that I search for deadlocks all the time. I just run individual commands which I know can produce a result. And if they do find a, a deadlock very quickly, that, that saves my time. I don't have to debug much. So anyway, in summary, the way to use M weights is just run M weights. If there's any lock that is trying to be acquired, just view the lock. Uh, in this case, I use GC root just to look at the root. Uh, you can use RW lock to look at the lock count. What you want to do is you want to find which threads are waiting on which locks. If DLK worked, which it did in the past, I mean, I remember using DLK in, in previous versions of .NET, it would have been much simpler you would have got uh, the output that it was analyzing the locks and it will just told you what the lock is. But in this case, because DLK doesn't quite work, M weights will do just fine. It's just a bit of extra work. Um, that, that's how it is with WinDebug. Once in a while, you do find a command that just doesn't work on this particular version of .NET, but it might have worked previously. Uh, just give it a go. Try DLK anyway. That's why I wanted to show it in this video. Um, I think this video is getting long enough, uh, so I think I'll just end it right here by just showing M weights and uh, a little bit after M weight to analyze the deadlock. Uh, definitely subscribe, gentle reminder to subscribe, hit that bell icon if you like what you see. Uh, that lets me know what kind of videos to make. I, I will certainly make more windy bug videos, especially the ones to do with deadlocks. I got a couple of more down, uh, down the line, a few more advanced techniques. I'm just trying to work out how to uh, properly record how these uh, locks occur and how to analyze them. Uh, definitely subscribe, give me a like if you want and definitely let me know in the description below if you want me to focus on any particular topic. It's been a pleasure presenting this information. I'm High Voice, signing out.